Thank you, Emily, for the reading of our scripture. Today, the message is on the Mark 13 text, and the sermon title is Stay Woke. This Advent season of 2023 seemed to come quickly. Michael Jackson had a song with the lyrics, time waits for no one. Advent calls our attention to the calendar and tells us there's four weeks till Christmas, four more Sundays, if five if we include today, until we ring in the new year. 2024, time waits for no one. So many things are happening, some joyous, some painful. Life is lifing, as they say, and time waits for no one. Brings to mind a hymn that I love, and if I had thought of it soon enough, I would have asked them to come to play it for today, and that is, time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand. Build your hope on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. There's a sense of urgency and expectation in both of these songs that rings in my mind on today, on this first Sunday of Advent, and with our scripture for today. Advent is a season of expectation. If you place yourself in the scene before Jesus' birth, imagine the anticipation of Mary and Joseph of the birth of Jesus, especially given the words that the angel of the Lord spoke to Mary. The angel said to Mary, do not be afraid. Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign. Imagine you're Mary if you can. And Joseph, my hope is that Mary, I believe she shared this with Joseph. Imagine you're hearing this and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Can you imagine the anticipation of this virgin birth even? Given the promise that he, his reign will have no end, we today should also live as active participants with great anticipation. That's Advent for me. And Advent is even more than that. The word Advent is derived from the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming, which translates to the Greek word parousia. Parousia is, in the New Testament, is used to denote the concept of being alongside of, denoting the idea of presence or arrival. From an eschatological standpoint, Advent over time in Christian practice came to be known both as the season of preparation of the celebration of the birth of Jesus, but also there was an anticipation of Jesus' second coming. Today's scripture has that eschatological tone. I should have everybody say that word. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Jesus is talking to four of his disciples doing quite a bit of teaching. And he begins to speak of things to come, including the destruction of the temple in Mark 13 and 2. He says, then Jesus asked him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that these things are about to be accomplished? That was in Mark 13, 2 through 4. And so that's the question that's being answered when we get all the way to verse 33. Jesus is explaining and giving metaphors and telling stories, and then he says to answer the question directly. Watch out, stay alert. You do not know when the time is coming. 
It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do, and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert, Jesus says. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows in the early morning or at daybreak, don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, Jesus says, is stay alert. The New Revised Standard Version translation, because Jesus didn't speak English, we all know that, correct? So that's a translation, stay alert. So the Reverend Veronica translation reads this way, stay woke. You heard it first here, Jesus said, stay woke. The scripture has a tone of a farewell speech, doesn't it? Like he's about to, to go on and move on. And, and, and he, so he tells his disciples many things in this gospel of Mark, if you look, and those who are New Testament scholars knows that there's a lot of Patching and things that were placed in there of stories and teachings, teaching after teaching. And in this teaching, he says, stay woke. In essence, Jesus is saying, I've taught you well, and I've given you a job to do. Now stay alert, stay woke, and do the work. Don't sleep on the job. Don't let go of what I've taught you. Don't stop what I've started. Don't get lulled back into old mindsets. I've instituted in you a new way of being. And in the face of all that will try to stop this way of being, stay with it. Stay woke. And in the season of Advent, it is indeed another opportunity to anticipate this Jesus. To get ready to celebrate once again that he was born and came and lived among us, Emmanuel. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm celebrating that Jesus created wokeness. And I find no better reason or person to celebrate. Now, if you know anything about wokeness in today's vernacular, stay woke became a common part of the vernacular in the social justice circles in the black community after the killing of an unarmed black man named Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri in 2014. Activists encouraged the black community to stay woke, stay aware of injustice, the patterns of injustice faced by our communities. Don't see these as individual occurrences, but stay woke to the mindsets and occurrences that do us harm. And do justice for our wellness and our, our right to live, excuse me, to do injustice to our wellness and to our right to live. Wokeness was part of even earliest justice movements, such as in the 1930s when activists called for a spiritual awakening for black communities to awaken from a state of mental sleep. I'm sure there are other justice movements that people of that movement were called to stay awake, stay alert. It's a call to remain in the state of mind, a consciousness that allows you to see injustice. A commitment to not be lulled into believing that all is well for everyone because it's not. It's a call to stay alert to what is happening so that you can remain on the side and do the work of justice. Recently, there has been an attack on wokeness. See, the, the more blatant injustice is visible to the naked eye, the more people of all demographics wake up and say, as humans, we can do better and things must change. Well, there are those who despise when the populace wakes up. There are those who rather we all stay asleep or go back to sleep and think that all is well in the world. So there's an attack on wokeness. It comes in the form of associating wokeness with particular people and movements and then besmirging those movements and say, see, it's dangerous to be woke. 
because it allows those who are against wokeness to gain power or regain power and powerful positions. And by the time the populace wakes up, it's too late. It happens in our society, it happens in other societies, and it happened in the society represented in the sacred text. So it's important that you know that Jesus called his disciples to stay woke. Jesus to stay woke means remain aware and alert and of a consciousness that meets my standards, Jesus is saying, uh, that aligns with my teachings. That's why he says stay alert. Jesus' teachings were countercultural to a culture that oppressed the lowly and lorded power to the point of harm and death. So the call to stay woke was a call to be like Jesus in the face of such power. Paul put it this way in Philippians. He says, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you. That was in Christ Jesus. And how do we know the mind of Christ Jesus? We listen to the words of Jesus. For as Jesus said in today's scripture, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. So let's listen to some of the words of Jesus. By this time, let's, let's listen for the purpose of staying Woke. Luke 4, 18, Jesus reads from the Isaiah scroll and says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then he says, today, this scripture has been fulfilled. I am fulfilling it, Jesus says, in your hearing. Stay woke, understanding and accepting that Jesus' ministry was a ministry committed to justice from the onset. Stay woke to his commitment to bring good news to the poor, to release captives, recover blindness, and to set the oppressed free. Stay woke to that. There are sects of Christians who totally ignore this. This was countercultural then, and it's countercultural now. And Jesus is saying, stay awake. Jesus reinforces this message by naming the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. He says this is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Then he says all the law. Say all. All means all. The law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus so wanted his disciples to stay woke that he commanded it. He commanded love of God and love of neighbor. And then he goes on to define neighbor in the story of the Good Samaritan as one who has been stripped, beaten, and left for dead. Jesus was woke and Jesus tells us to stay woke. He commands us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Stay woke. Stay woke means to be a person who loves everybody. Regardless of race, ethnicity, color of skin, or station in life, because they are a child of God. Stay woke is to believe in the human ability to flourish and the right to do so unhindered. To stay woke is to eradicate that which prevents human flourishing and to stand with those typically on the underbelly of society. Just consider the subjects of the stories of the Gospels, the subjects of Jesus' healings and Jesus' miracles, those who were widows, beggars, the blind, the lame, the woman with the issue of blood, the woman at the well, the man at the pool, 
Though society in that day pushed aside, walked over, abandoned, and enslaved, Jesus did the opposite of what society would do. Jesus affirmed. Fall in love with Jesus all over again. Jesus healed. Jesus blessed. Jesus restored. And then he told his disciples, stay woke. Because all I've done is counter to the cultural that, culture that you're steeped in. But I need you, if this movement is going to grow and last and usher in the kingdom, I need you to stay woke. Don't let society forget those who are hurting. Stay woke. Don't let society injure those who need help. Stay woke to what I've taught you and be a person who carries on the work. At my job, we recently did a training session on disability. And we, we learned and, and, and came to an understanding of how this society, the, the U.S. and even Chicago and other cities, what they thought of those who had any disability. We wonder why buildings, including public buildings, did not have accessible entrances. It wasn't because there, were those, there weren't those who were disabled. It was because they did not expect them to engage in society. Stay home out of the way was the concept. This is why there's been so much in our lifetime. The American Disabilities Act and other acts that says, no, all, all people have, the, have the, the right to engage life fully. So that wasn't new. It was, it was also in, in the biblical times, if you will. This is why the man at the pool laid there over and over. For, for how long did it say? 38 years or 36 years with people stepping over because people did not have a mind to help those who were hurting. They didn't naturally go out of their way. See, some of us are woke because it's natural to us. If we see a need, we feel the need. Jesus said, I've taught you a whole different way than the culture you're steeped in, but I need you to stay woke. He put it real clear in Matthew 25, 31, when, when he gives another uh, a story, another parable of sorts. When the Son of Man comes, he says, in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as shepherd, shepherd separates the sheep from the goats and he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on his left and then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For the foundation of the world. For when I was hungry, you gave me food. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, and you welcomed me in. Countercultural. When I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Countercultural. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when did we do this for you? And, and when did we do that for you? And he said, truly, I tell you, just as you did it for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. This is the spirit of Advent, the spirit of today's text, to stay alert and to do the work. Sure, you can do it because you believe Jesus is coming back. And sure, you can do it because you want to get to heaven. But stay woke because Jesus also said, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Yet Jesus said, stay woke. But he also said, stay lit. Stay woke because harmony is better than disharmony. Stay woke because love is a principal thing. Stay woke because your life will be better when you love. Listen again to Jesus who taught about the benefit of following the way of love and justice. In John 4, 13, 14, Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water 
will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them. See, we haven't thought of it in the, the sense of, of staying woke, but he says, whoever drinks the water I give them, I've been giving, will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. There is benefits to being wokeness, and it is the abundant life that Jesus promises. Jesus' way of life is life-giving, not just for the oppressed, but for us all. It's life-giving to live in harmony. Who prefers harmony over disharmony? Amen. Life-giving to ensure your neighbor is well, regardless of their demographics. It's, it's life-giving to stand for justice in the face of injustice. Life-giving to stay Woke. Stay woke because Jesus said in John 10, 10 that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. It's no longer a political statement to stay woke. Stay woke because God's kingdom of love and justice is truly what we're waiting for. And we're not only participants, we're ushering it in. By staying woke. In this Sunday of hope, I remind us as I get ready to close of our hope series with the, the centering text of Romans 5 5. Hope does not disappoint. Because, listen to this, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For the reality is, once God's love has been poured into our hearts, it's not hard to stay woke. Wokeness is a way of being for those with a transformed heart. It's not because he's coming back again, ooh, I better not get caught not doing what he told me to do. It's because hearts have been transformed by the love and the grace of God. The Apostle Paul said it this way in Romans 12 as I close, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's good, pleasing, and perfect will is. During this season of Advent, anticipate the celebration of a Jesus who was woke. Prepare to celebrate Jesus who sought to make love the center of human action. Prepare to celebrate a Jesus who promised that his word would never pass away. And commit to staying woke and to do the work because your heart has been transformed. And no attempt to stop wokeness can ever prevail. God bless you.